Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Southside Crew. We're back. That's right. It is good to be back, guys. Let me just say right now, uh, I've been doing my motivational stuff, like I said before, but I got a haircut, and Liam's at school today, so we won't be able to do a video with him yet, but we have a return video today, which is going to be the top 10 refreshing facts about watermelon. Watermelon is awesome. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite fruits. It's Hank's favorite fruits, too, as you guys know. So yeah, we're gonna get into that video today. Top 10 facts about watermelon. If you like the video, give us a like, subscribe. We are glad to be back with you guys. Um, and I hope everybody has a great day. So here we go. So as you guys know, August 3rd is National Watermelon Day. Um, a lot of us here in the United States and around the world love to eat watermelon year round, but mostly in the summertime. And uh, you know, we have more time on our hands, especially as kids when we're off school or Maybe in, you're in a part of the world where you still go to school during the summer. Still, the summertime is a time to enjoy a nice cold drink and some fresh watermelon. Sometimes with salt, which I don't understand. I've never had it before, but maybe we'll try it out for a raw picks. Anyway, here we go. Top 10 watermelon facts. Number one, watermelons are both a fruit and a vegetable. Thanks to their sweet taste, watermelons are most commonly considered a fruit. As they do grow like fruit, originating from flowers that have been pollinated by bees, and from a botanical perspective, they're fruits because they contain seeds. But many gardeners think of them as vegetables since they grow them in their gardens alongside other summer veggies like peas and corn. Not to mention, it is also classified as part of the botanical family of gourds. Wow, I did not know any of that. So it's a fruit and a vegetable. Um, I considered a fruit for most of my life. Maybe if, you know, I can cross-reference this and once uh, I cross-reference all this information I'll put a check right here maybe like a maybe or no it's not true so there you go guys watermelons are fruits and vegetables apparently let's get into our second fact you can eat the entire fruit what why we tend to focus on the melon succulent flesh watermelon rinds are also edible as well as full in of nutrients with surprising health benefits. In China, the rinds are often stir-fried or stewed. Wow, while in the South, cooks, to, cooks like to pickle them. And across the Middle East and China, the seeds are dried and roasted. I did know this. Some of the pumpkin seeds and make for a light, easy snack. I'd have to roast some watermelon rind and dry it out. Maybe it has some good flavor because, you know, as kids, we, also, we always tr try to get that white part of the rind. We always just stop at the red and bam, just throw it away. But you know, there could be a more effective way to use the watermelon, like in this fact. So definitely gonna try that out. That sounds like something I would definitely do. I love food, I love cooking, so we'll try it out. Maybe we'll do it for a sweet home cooking. All right, number three, they're called watermelons for a reason. They sure are, guys. They're 92% water, making them a perfect refresher for those hot thermals, like I said. They're the best snack to have during a hot summer day. I live in Florida, I know that, so definitely a good snack to have. And very healthy too. Uh, nature's candy and um, very healthy. Like I said, a lot of water. Um, it doesn't even have that much flavor, but it's just so refreshing that the flavors kind of overtake it by the refreshingness of it, if that makes sense. So that's really cool. All right, number four, they come in 1,200 different varieties. Wow, I didn't know this. To make classification a little easier, however, watermelons tend to be grouped into four main categories. Seeded or picnic, seedless, icebox, also known as mini or personal, and yellow orange. One of the most popular varieties is the crimson sweet, a seeded watermelon with deep red sweet flesh. Some are unusual varieties such as the golden midget, whose rind turns yellow when it's ripe, I have heard of that, and the cream of Saskatchewan, whose flesh is cream colored. I might put some pictures of what these look like uh, as I read them out, but that is really cool um, that they have so many different varieties of watermelon. I think the one we're used to is a Crimson Sweet, which is the seedless uh, red one that we get at the stores or at the farmer's market. So yeah, but I might put a picture of all of them because that sounds pretty cool. All right, number five, the seedless ones are not genetically engineered. Wow, let's see why. Contrary to what you might have been heard, Seedless watermelons are the result of hybridization, a perfectly natural phenomenon that farmers can nevertheless capitalize on. A couple of decades ago, seedless watermelons were hard to find, but today they make up around 85% of those sold in the U.S. And those white seeds, 
that you can still find in your seedless slices. They're actually the empty seed coats and are perfectly safe to eat. I did not even know that. I'm blown on that one. <laughs> but that is really cool how they're not genetically modified because I think a lot of people believe that, you know, oh, um, they're not really seedless. Are they, you know, they just genetically modified? They, they're not naturally seedless, are they? They just genetically modify it. But no, that's not the case. There's no GMOs. They actually have a hybridization. They hybrid different watermelon species, which is really interesting. Number six, watermelons could grow to be really, really big. The heaviest watermelon to date was grown by the Guinness World Record holder, Chris Kent of Sevierville, Tennessee in 2013, a Carolina cross. It weighed at a 350.5 pounds. That is huge. That is the equivalent of an NFL lineman. Wow, that is a big watermelon. If I could find the picture, it's right there because that's awesome how huge that is. Wow, that is, I wonder how you can, you can't even carry that, can you? Unless you're like a power lifter or something. I couldn't carry it with my, my arms. I definitely not. But that's really cool. All right, number seven. Watermelons can help prevent cancer. Ooh, okay. Uh, they are a great source of lysopene, an antioxidant that has been shown to reduce the risk of several types of cancers, including prostate, lung, and stomach. Not just coffee can help with cancer, but watermelon. So, you know, if you like watermelon... Eat more watermelon. Watermelon is very good. It has not many calories. I think it, for about a whole watermelon, maybe about, I have to look it up, but it's about that much calories. I mean, it's not that unhealthy for a regular seedless watermelon at the store. Um, but they are a very good light snack, especially for breakfast. You can make a fruit salad. So I can see why, you know, it can help with cancer because of this lysopene, which is antioxidants. Antioxidants have been proven to help with a lot of things, you know, indigestion, uh, energy, sicknesses, immuno stuff, so it makes sense, and it's really cool. All right, number eight, I've heard about this. Farmers in Japan have perfected the art of growing them in odd shapes. In Japan, farmers have been growing cube-shaped watermelons for the last 40 years, forcing them into the square shape by cultivating them in boxes like braces. When the watermelon fills in the cube and gets picked, it's really not ripe yet, meaning that the inedible melons are sold for a price upward to $100 as novelty gifts and items. Oh, the original idea was so it could fit in refrigerators. Yeah, I heard about these watermelons on like YouTube and some news articles, and I've seen them, you know, online and advertisements, but they look really cool. And there's a picture from the website. That's just, that's really cool that how they do that. I never tried it. I would try it, but I think they just put in like this cube thing, like I was saying before, where they just put in this cube so I can grow it like a like a cube, which is genius. It's really cool how they do that. I wonder how the rind looks like. It's probably just like a square, but yeah, it'd probably be easier to eat too. You have like the rind's like a smile almost. This is more square, so if you get a slice of watermelon, it's gonna be easier to like you know not put your mouth on the side. You, you know you know what I'm talking about. All right, number nine. One South Carolina family kept an heirloom variety alive for almost a hundred years. The unusually sweet Bradford, created by Nathaniel Napoleon Bradford in Sumter County, South Carolina in the, in the 1840s, sorry, was one of the most sought after varieties of watermelon in the South as ever seen, but its soft skin made it hard to transport, and by the early 1920s, it proved to be commercially unviable. Okay, it would have been disappear it would have disappeared completely had the Bradford family not kept it alive in their backyard gardens for multiple generations. It is now being grown commercially again by Nat Bradford and Nathaniel's great 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 grandson. Wow. That's really cool how they like carried that, you know, into the next pretty much century, the nineteen hundreds. And now they're growing again. That's really good how they kind of revived that species. That's awesome. Alright, and number ten guys, last one they are the official state vegetable of Oklahoma. In 2007, the Oklahoma State Senate honored its then 14th biggest crop by voting 442 to make it the state vegetable. Why not fruit? That distinction was already given to the strawberry. Its celebrated status was threatened in 2015, however, when State Senator Nathan Dam moved to repeal the bill passed on the argument that the watermelon is a fruit. Ah, gotcha. Thankfully for Oklahoma's Rush Springs, home to an annual watermelon festival and the original bill sponsor, then state representative Joe Dorman, Dam's bill died in committee. Great job for keeping it the state vegetable. 
That is really interesting, though, that it's the same vegetable and not the fruit. Because we talked about it before because um, they were talking about how it, it was classified as a gourd, so therefore it was a vegetable. That's really interesting how it works in some places that they did that. And there you go, guys. Those are the top 10 facts about watermelon. If you liked the video, give it a like. And I hope you guys are ready for more videos here. We're going to be uploading about once or twice a week. Maybe even three times a month. It's going to be a lower uh, video upgrade scale, but that's okay. I hope everybody has an amazing day. We'll see you next time for the show. I'm RJ, and we'll see you next week. For the South Surf Crew.